Um, so why don't you give us some examples of uh, how international law evolved in the wake of World War II that illustrate your point about the role of great powers in crafting international law? I, I think one really good example would be the Non-Proliferation Treaty, which basically the Soviet... So early, ni- early 1960s. Actually, yeah. 1968. I, I think there was movement oh. towards crafting... Uh, an NPT starting in the early 60s, but 1968 is usually the date that is put on it. And it was, I think, ratified in 1970. But the key point here is that both the United States and the Soviet Union, which were the only two great powers on the planet during the Cold War, they decided that the proliferation problem was getting out of hand and that something had to be done to stem the tide of nuclear proliferation. So they got together. And they effectively wrote the NPT, which is a series of rules or laws. And the NPT, of course, is an institution. So you can see how all these words are synonymous. And what the Soviets and the Americans did was they wrote rules that were in their interest, because both of those superpowers had no interest in proliferation. And they then worked together to force other states to sign the NPT and then obey the NPT so that there would be no uh, more proliferation. Of course, there was a bit more proliferation after 1968, but the NPT helped a lot. And this is a good example, Bob, of how rules serve the interests of great powers. The NPT has worked to the advantage of the Americans and the Soviets, now the Russians. So rules are a good thing. But you also want to remember that when we wrote the NPT, we wrote into it that the United States and the Soviet Union would go to great lengths to reduce and ultimately eliminate their nuclear weapons. In other words, if the great powers are saying the smaller powers can't have nuclear weapons, one would expect the great powers to eventually get rid of their own nuclear weapons. But if you look at the arms racing that took place during the latter part of the Cold War after the NPT was signed, and if you look at what the Americans are doing now in terms of expanding their nuclear capabilities, uh, it's hard to say that we have been obeying the rules of the NPT. Uh, We concoct stories that try to show that, yes, we have been living up to the rules. But in fact, I don't think we have, and I don't think we ever have. I think we will keep our nuclear weapons, expand our nuclear arsenal, uh, and arms race with the Chinese in the decades ahead. But that really uh, violates the treaty, in my opinion. 